In this video, we'll be taking a look at 3D scanning objects with the Creality Lizard 3D Scanner and seeing what results it can produce. The scanner kit comes neatly packaged in a semi-rigid carry case which is perfect for storage and transport. Inside there is a quick start guide for the CR Studio software, a USB stick containing the user manuals, software, video tutorials and troubleshooting information. There is a textured round turntable top, the motorised turntable base and the scanner data cable which is approximately 2.1 metres in length. There is a power supply, micro USB cable, mini tripod and the scanner module. There are various outlet adapters for the power supply and these attach and click into place. The colour kit includes a USB light box, bracket for mounting the scanner and a camera, various cables for the camera connection, a USB Bluetooth adapter, phone mount and a mini metal tripod to complete the kit. Using the colour kit, it can pair the scanner with a smartphone or camera. Then after capturing the 3D scan, the software can add the colours onto the textured scan. To set up the scanner, the mini tripod is screwed onto the base. The scanner is then placed in the horizontal position for tabletop scanning. For handheld scanning, the tripod legs collapse and adjust to a vertical position to make an ergonomic grip. The data cable has a small red dot to indicate the plug orientation and this plugs into the side of the scanner module. At the other end of the cable is a barrel jack for connecting the 12 volt power supply. And for transferring the data, there is a USB plug which can be plugged into a PC or Mac computer. The turntable base is motorised and used to rotate a small object. There is a micro USB cable which plugs into the side port. The textured turntable sits on top of the motorised base. The unit is powered from a USB port on a computer, or it can also be powered from your own USB phone charger. With the scanner set up, next we can install the software. The latest CR Studio 2.0 application is used to capture, edit and process the scanned data. On the left side are the basic tools for viewing objects, object selection, transform and external mapping. At the top, there are two modes to select from. Easy scan, which is for handheld scanning, or table scan, which is used with the motorised turntable. For the first test scan, we are scanning a phone charger in the table scan mode. There are a few things to prepare before starting the scan. We need to align the 3D scanner with the turntable, then ensure the distance to the object on the wave monitor is in range. During the preview, we may need to adjust the brightness slider and also select the scan type from either geometry or texture. Next, we remove the object and click on initial. This will run the initialization process. Now we can place the object back onto the turntable and click on scan. During this time, the scanner will capture many individual points on the surface and map them in a 3D space. At this stage we have the top of the model scanned, but missing the underside. We can complete a second scan by clicking Append. The object is flipped over and the scan is clicked to capture the second side. The next step is to remove the turntable plate from the scan data. This can be completed manually by using the selection tool and pressing delete, or by selecting several points on the base and selecting the basement selection although sometimes the basement selection automatically selects more than required. With both scans complete and the turntable plate removed, we can click on Align. The scans will be automatically aligned within the software. In this case, it had an error with the two prongs being combined in the same orientation as scanned. To resolve this, we can manually align by adding three points on the separate scans. Scans are rotated into the correct orientation and then the three alignment mark points are added to both of the scans. These don't need to be perfectly matched but on the correct planes and using features or edges do help. Once we click on align this time, we have a successfully aligned part. The last step is to process the scan data points into a mesh. 
We just need the two scanned files selected and click on process. From here we can clean up any noise particles, repair or simplify the model. We may notice the ends of the prongs are a little bit rough. This is because of the reflection noise caused by the metal surface. The rest of the model looks good and we can see the features on the sides, the USB-C port and the clean edges. This model can now be saved as an OBJ, PLY or STL file. It is then ready to slice and 3D print or it can be used in a CAD software to modify the mesh or create parametric models. The next scan is of a mechanical fuel pump. This is a combination of two scans using the scanner in handheld mode and then manually turning the turntable plate. Scanning speed is fairly quick and easy with slow, steady movements to achieve the best results. With the two scans complete, the turntable base is selected and removed. To combine the two scans, we will use the auto-align function again. This time, the software perfectly aligned the scanned parts. From here, we can click on process and turn the model into a mesh. There are a few holes in the model where the scanned data wasn't captured. These holes can be automatically filled with the repair function. With better preparation and a few more scans, this result can be improved. The next scan is of a race boot. The black leather on the upper provided an excellent surface to scan, allowing the scanner to capture the boot in detail as it is steadily moved around the sides. A second scan of the underside rubber sole is completed and then the scan data is aligned, processed and repaired. Overall, for a quick test scan, the scanner captured an excellent and impressive model of the race boot. Creating scans with texture mapping on an object is also another great option to add some detail. These can also have colour added by using a separate camera or mobile with the colour kit. Using an oil refill cap for the final test scan presents an issue as it's not being seen by the scanner. For objects like this, it's best to use a developer or powder spray. This will help dull the surface and allow for the 3D scanner to capture the scanned data. This special treatment for shiny, metal and transparent objects is required, otherwise they are essentially invisible to the scanner. A light coat of the spray is all that is needed on the object. Then the item is placed back onto the scanner and scanned in handheld mode. A total of three scans are completed to capture all angles. Once finished, the spray can be easily wiped off the original item. The scans are quickly cleaned up in the software and automatically aligned and then processed into a mesh. Preparation is the key to good scans, so it's recommended to use a developer or powder spray for improved scan quality. This is especially important with shiny, metal or transparent objects. The scanned mesh model may have a little bit of inaccuracies and these can be corrected by taking actual measurements with calipers to assist when creating a parametric CAD model. The 3D scanner and software can produce functional scans of parts where you're looking to reverse engineer an item or design and customise a part. Overall, it's a capable device that produces useful and good quality 3D scans.